and the four or five of us walked in and we put our head up and we could basically see everyone we'd ever either grown up watching or were watching on our TV screens on a, on a, you know, almost daily basis in one room. Welcome to another edition of Take 5 with Cohesion Plus. We have a very, very special guest today, humble that we've got the great Amit Channa. Amit, welcome to Take 5 with Cohesion Plus. Thanks for having me, bro. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. So first things first, how did you deal with the lockdown? I mean, this very weekend was supposed to be our, our what we do, a, a thing called British Asian Festival. I work for a company called Rifco Theatre Company. I'm the associate director there, and it's, a, it's kind of the UK's leading British Asian touring theatre company. Um, and every two years we do a festival called British Asian Festival where we take over the whole building where we're based, which is Watford Palace Theatre. And for a whole weekend, we champion young South, uh, British South Asian kind of artists across the board. So, so unfortunately that's been delayed. And then it's also our 20th anniversary. So this autumn we were going to do a massive Rifco 20th celebration of like excerpts of our best shows over the last 20 years. Um, and all of that has, has been put on pause. So fortunately for us, you know, because like a lot of us are uh, MPOs and stuff where we're arts council funded. So they, they've been really, really generous and supportive and said, look, don't worry. You don't have to cancel what you've done this year. We'll just bounce everything to next year. So, um, and next year is looking equally, if not more busy. So fingers crossed, we can, we can start to kind of put our feet out and, and do something creative. What inspired you to become, become an actor? I was, I was very much inspired by, by Bollywood actors like Amitabh Bachchan. Um, I was inspired by, actors that I thought were a little bit brown because they were tanned like John Travolta and Sylvester Stallone, you know, and I grew up listening to Michael Jackson and Elvis Presley and all those kind of people and everything around me was creative. Uh, and I think subconsciously, my, my mum particularly, but my parents saw it, saw it within me first. And then strangely enough, when we moved to Harrow when I was 13, there was a Sunday kind of acting workshop school that my mum knew about. It used to get advertised in the back of these Bollywood magazines and that was in Wembley and we had a shop in Wembley. So my mum enrolled me in that when I was 13. And I went through that Sunday school thing for three months and they had an agency and they took me on. And, and actually from something that was a hobby and creative learning, when I turned 20, 21, I thought, oh God, I don't know how else to make money now. Um, so it suddenly became a career. Uh, and so, yeah, certainly with my parents' blessings, but, but uh, just with the influences around me, I think. Many people will recognise you from Ben De La Beckham and obviously like EastEnders. Um, how did like Ben Dilla Beckham come about? And, and did you realise while you guys were filming it that it would become like a cult classic, you know, musicals, it went international and people are still talking about it today? So Ben was a weird one, right? So I, I'd known Gorinda for a long time and I met her at an Asha Borsle concert years before the film was made. And we went to the, the kind of drink soiree thing afterwards and she was saying, oh, I'm trying to get this film funded about a young Punjabi girl from West London who wants to play football. And I was like, wow, that's like out of the box completely. Um, I said, we don't even have Punjabi, like Asian boys playing football yet in the, it was called First Division then, you know, um, let alone kind of girls. And she went, I know, and no one wants to give me the money for it. And I was like, you know, that's a challenge. Then years later, I was invited by Gorinda to come and audition for the part of Tony. Um, I must have done something good. You know, I got the job and, and in 2001, we shot the film. And even while we were filming it, there was like a special vibe on the set. A lot of us were friends. We all knew each other. You know, we all just pitched in. Uh, and I think the person that knew that, that this was special was Gorinda. She, she knew she had something very, very special. And then once it was in the can and we all saw the first cut, we all went, you know, the title, the timing, the association with Beckham, women's football in America was huge at that time. Mia Hamm uh, was like an equal celebrity to, to the likes of Beckham and people like that. Um, and everything about England at that time, because they qualified, you know, to the semi-finals and all that kind of stuff. It was just a magical. All the stars were aligned, man. You're growing up like all of us watch EastEnders, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're auditioning and you're kind of coming part of the show. What does that feel like? So we were invited to the cast picture a couple of weeks before we started filming. We all turned up, and they took us to this kind of what looks like a sports hall in Elstree, and I think they used to shoot Top of the Pops next door to that. Um, and they open these like, you know, gym doors, you know, the gym doors with those fire exit things and you walk in and like a school picture, there was like benches 
you know, like you get the bleachers in, in basketball courts and everyone was like, and the four or five of us walked in and we put our head up and we could basically see everyone we'd ever either grown up watching or were watching on our TV screens on a, on a, you know, almost daily basis in one room. And then walking on the square, the outdoor set of just how small it was, because on TV it looks massive and, it, and it's really small. Um, but yeah, those, those memories will remain with me forever. Now, obviously we've spoken a little bit about your TV and your film career. What about theatre? And I know you've done a lot of work in theatre. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what's it like? I mean, is it more pressure? The greatest thing about theatre is the, it is the most collaborative process in the arts because all of you are starting from page one. You know, with TV and film, you can turn up and they might have shot 30% of the film before you get there in a random order. Or with a TV show, you might be in a run, long running show like EastEnders and you're just sort of jumping on the treadmill. But with theatre, you're all starting on day one in the same place with a fresh script, with the title, and you all open it and you all create that piece of art together in a room for three, four, five weeks, whatever it is. And, and it's the most collaborative process and it's the most enjoyable process. In fact, for me, the most enjoyable process of theatre is the rehearsal process and then the opening couple of nights. After that, I'm kind of like done. I'm like, okay, I've got to go back and do this again. But the joy of creating something and putting it in front of an audience for the first time is is irreplaceable that feeling i know you've also also done bollywood as well is there much difference for example between you know, a bollywood film set uh, when you're working on like a hollywood or a british film set um to me i've sort of the more i've grown up and learned you know in this industry the more i've realized that actually the the, the industry is the same different the only difference between say a, an indian film production and a uk film production is 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 the hierarchy you know it is run by star power Generally, as a whole, I, I've been on film sets in the UK with some big, big stars, and I've felt equal to them, you know, uh, outside of being in front of the camera. But when you're, you know, working in films like with, with Shah Rukh and Abhishek Bachchan and, and, and Preeti that I've had the opportunity to do, when you're in the scene with them, you're all equal. But outside of that, you know, there is a certain thing that comes with that star power that, that kind of slightly removes you from the equality, I guess. And, and that's, that's the big difference. But that's changing as well. I've seen it in the more recent stuff I've done. You know, everyone's kind of all, the directors are getting younger, that's why. And I think their approach is teaching those older star powered kind of um, actors to kind of understand and go, wow, this guy isn't treating me like a star. You know, he's treating me like his actor who's playing his lead role. And I think that's changing their mindsets a little bit. Um, talk a little bit about your work with Rifco Arts. You know, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier on as well, but I know you've got quite an important role there and what your kind of aspirations are. And then over the last 20 years, I've been closely associated with the company. I've been in a number of their shows, uh, but also over the last sort of three or four years, I've kind of taken a step up within the company and started to assist and direct probation shows that he was doing a big musical called Layla the Musical. Or October 2018, the opportunity to become an actual associate director at the company arose. Um, and I applied for it and I got the job. And, and, and then at the end of last year, 2019, I directed my first show, which was a rap musical called Mushy Lyrically Speaking, which was about Musha Vazga that many of us will remember from Educating Yorkshire, the kid with the, the, the debilitating stammer. And we took his story and turned it into a rap musical. Um, and I directed that and it was a great, great opportunity and, a, and very, very creatively satisfying. My aspiration is to create and be part of making work for people like me and you, you know, at, not just as an audience, but as creatives as well. There's not many places that British Asian actors can go to in this country or beyond and be able to tell stories, their own stories or their parents' experiences or us as a community's experience on stage. Obviously, both our backgrounds in the arts, when we were growing up, I mean, we've got to where we have in spite of the system through a lot of hard work and a lot of luck. Mm. So hopefully now you know, with the kind of direction from Arts Council England uh, and the kind of clamour from diverse communities as well. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, that next generation hopefully won't have it as kind of hard and tough as like, you know, we did kind of. And, and now, hopefully, younger people who want to get involved in the creative arts, like, you know, like, that, like me and you have and, and various people around us, you're right. Hopefully they're starting to write scripts and not have to start with minus points, you know, um, what advice would you give to people from diverse backgrounds kind of starting out? Everything is a learning process. And as long as you stay open-minded, I learn everything on my feet. 
in the theatre. I didn't go to drama school. The first thing I would do is, you know, just just don't don't just go for that five, ten minutes of fame. It's like Amon said the other day in, in his interview. He was like, if you're going to do music, commit to it. Don't just, you know, want to be famous for 15 minutes or, you know, jump on Big Brother or Love Island and go, that's it, I made it. You know, learn your craft, commit to it. And, and also uh, take people along on the journey with you. Some good advice there. So we're going to do a quick fire round now, yeah? Right. Bollywood or Hollywood? Uh, much quick the fire. same to me. Much the same to me. But, but let's go Bollywood. All right. Amita Bajan or Al Pacino? Amita Bajan. Meryl Streep or Rekha? Meryl Streep. B21 or Jesse Sidhu? <laughs> Jesse Sidhu. <laughs> all right. And this is the all important question Nando's or pizza? Definitely Nando's. I'm not a big fan of dough, man. You know, like that thick dough. I don't mind pizza if it's thin crust, but Nando's chicken, mate, all day. No problem at all. Well, <laughs> thank you very much, Amy, for being such a great guest. It's my pleasure. You know, really, really enjoyed that. Check out Meet's work with Rifco and also, and obviously, all these social media handles as well, which are. Uh, you can find me at Amit Chana, just A M T A M W T C H A N A, and Rifco at Rifco Theatre across the whole board to find out what we're doing and all the great work we're doing as well. Thank you. That's another episode done of Take Five with Cohesion Plus. <laughs>